And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salutation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The narrative goes immediately from the restraining of the winds and the anointing of the elect to the Lamb being adored by all of every nation and kindred who shall be saved. These fortunate many are shown in white robes carrying palm branches. In ancient Greece, these were traditionally given to victorious athletes. In this, as in the language of its composition and in many of its central concepts, the New Testament visibly bears the imprint of the Hellenistic world in which Christianity first grew. The winners are understandably joyous, and Durer's depiction is rendered yet more credible by several of them who just look up in wonderment. As if to compensate for this abbreviated indication of the numberless multitude, Durer gives us the full count of four and twenty elders, each with a unique little expression of sagacity and an equally individual crown. In the foreground, John, between two praying angels, addressed by one of the elders, kneels on his island, Set at the base of the picture, he reminds us we are seeing this entire vision through his eyes. Above all, the Lamb stands on a rainbow within its own sun, surrounded by the four beasts, looking as heraldic as it does hieratic. This beautiful, triumphant creature, with its unsettling surplus of eyes and horns, in a culminating flourish, shoots its own vivifying blood into the chalice held by an extremely happy elder.